so I have two piles. I have a compost pile, and then I have a feed pile. With this. These are all radish greens. They really didn't do well, but the greens will be, the, the rabbits will enjoy them. So it's kind of fun that you know that you're you're gathering food all in one little visit to the raised bed. You can see these potatoes. I love digging for potatoes. It feels like you're digging for gold. Hi everybody, Bobby from the Rabbitry Center and today we're going to do a very special video specifically showing you what a receptive doe looks like. Uh, now you're not going to be able to tell just from a distance, you're going to have to actually pick the rabbit up, take it out of the cage, put it down and, and inspect the vent. Now I've even read folks think this is a myth and this is something that you absolutely should be looking for, you should be paying attention to your timing because this can all uh, be on a cycle. And something that's very important is that you should know it's not a myth. Rabbits do have an estrogen level and you know they're induced ovulators but a rabbit does have a cycle. Two times a month it won't be receptive for a few days and it's more like three to four days and then their cycle resets and they're gonna they're gonna be receptive again. Now when you put a, a rabbit with a red swollen vent in a buck's cage uh, in most cases you're gonna this this rabbit's gonna lift okay. Um, Often, sorry we have a lot of mosquitoes out here, often uh, you're not going to have any trouble, but if you do, watch the video in the corner. It's a table breeding method that we, it's a video we did a few years ago showing you how to get a doe started for your program. So I have a litter behind me that's uh, playing around. So today I'm going to go grab a doe and I'm going to show you, uh, because I have a doe in mind that the kits are right around four or five weeks. And when you breed your does, when the kits are still running around, your chances are really good. Four weeks after your doe kindles, it's going to be receptive again. This is a good time to rebreed it. Uh, in a couple weeks, those rabbits are gonna start to get weaned and your rabbit will be two weeks into its gestation. You'll be able to separate those kits from the mom and she'll have a couple weeks and she can eat and uh, get ready for her new litter. So today we're gonna go get our rabbit. We're gonna use this tote. I always use this tote. Uh, it's a four gallon tote, really neat, nothing to it. I've had it for years. And you know, even though you can carry your rabbit 
across your rabbitry. Um, I choose this because it, it never fails. You know, every time you think you can just take it, you know, here's a fresh scratch right there. So that's what happens. You know, they say you always can spot a person that has rabbits because they have scratches on their arm. So, okay, let's go get a rabbit. Let me get this camera right so you can see what this looks like. Okay. I'm gonna point it right down here, and hopefully I get this, this angle right. So here she is, I'm gonna roll her back. I'm just simply gonna apply pressure right here. It's red. And so that's what a swollen red vent looks like. Actually, it looks like she's starting to get done with her cycle. So, but it's still swollen and she should lift. So let's put her in with the blue, a broken blue. She's a good girl. She's always been a good girl. She's got great shape. Pretty eyes. Let's see what you are. Notice that it's, it's not as red. She, you know, people always argue when it comes to growing fodder, but you know, just like anybody else, the rabbits don't want to eat the same thing all the time. It's nice to have a different version of that same food. Just like you can have corn on the cob, cream of corn, uh, just some regular corn to throw uh, into your mashed potatoes or next to your mashed potatoes. Uh, just like with their oats, you know, you can have the whole oats or you can feed green oats. Maybe you're making some smoothies. Um, all of this, it's all good, you know, and so when we get done with our beds, maybe we'll throw in some barley, maybe we'll throw in some oats, winter wheat. What's in this bed is some bok choy, and some celery. Bok choy grows back pretty quick. You'll get two or three, you'll get two or three harvests from the same plant easily. You know, that was what was really cool about making the course was how much I took away from it. And in the course we cover it all. We're covering fodder trees, bushes, hedges, vegetables, herbs. Uh, and then we talk about growing food plots and raised beds and, and just how to do it correctly. And maybe some things that, uh, you know, are friendly reminders to you. You know, there's a lot of really good growers out there uh, but they just don't necessarily know what to grow specifically for rabbits. Between the peppers, we're growing buckwheat. We'll be able to harvest some of this buckwheat in the next five, six weeks and take them to our rabbits. These peppers were ready to go. We started them indoors and we were just ready to go uh, right around mid, mid August. So, you know, this is kind of what we have to do here in Michigan because we just have such a gro short growing season. We have to start before the weather's right and uh, pretty much June 1st is when we can get it out here. Another thing we added in due to our feed course was the greenhouse. Now this greenhouse was pretty inexpensive to get started and we grew a lot of cool things out of it. And this year we're gonna be able to grow a little bit longer into the season. Here in Michigan it starts to get cold right around October. And we can expect our first frost date anywhere from October 1st to, to October 15th. But this greenhouse is, is going to extend our growing season just a little bit. Eventually we're going to remove the cover to get through the winter because it's just going to take a beating from the snow. But you can see the comfrey did really well in front of the greenhouse as well as on the south side and then the north side the artichokes are about 12 feet tall. So and that was all planted this year right around uh, May, June. So over my shoulder this is where we grew our carrots and our onions. And once we harvested everything out, we threw in some radish and turnips. And 
uh, as early as September 15th, but really no later than October 15th. Once we get done, the rabbits will get to enjoy the tops and we're gonna take the turnips and the radishes and then we'll cover crop with cereal grain, uh, winter wheat. In Michigan, we're gonna use wheat, but down south, you most likely will use oats. You can tell the weeping willow hedges have green stalks and the, the trees have brown. So that's how you can tell them apart. I have them all growing in here, but the lamb quarter just took off. And now I have to get in here and clean it all out. So behind me is our celery bed. We grew romaine lettuce out of this first thing this year. We used a shade cloth that's hanging over the back of it right now. It's 66 degrees, so they don't need the shade cloth. But, but look at this. This has been growing for uh, just about a couple months. And this is a lot of food, and it's premium food, high quality supplement feeding uh, for, you know, to replace your pellet or to uh, just supplement your, your feed costs. I tell you, you know, when you can cut out the middleman, when you don't have to buy food from the store, I mean, that stuff is, is sprayed with hazardous chemicals. It, whenever you can grow good, clean food for you and your family and your livestock, um, that's the best way to go. It, you can split this in thirds and, and set it up, or you can just feed one plant to your rabbits, depending on how much celery you have. So, but really easy to uh, supplement your feed costs. We go over all of that in our courses. And you know, if you guys like our YouTube channel and you find it helpful, uh, it, our course is like our YouTube channel on steroids. So it's, it's more concise, it's more detailed, there's more uh, resources for you. So, you know, if, if you think that you're gonna be able to uh, learn more faster purchasing the course, you're absolutely correct. So that's why we designed it. We designed it for kind of like our special membership uh, because we're always adding to that and uh, it's gonna get better and better. So this time of year, there's a sale running. Be sure to take advantage of that. Over my shoulder is a food plot that we put in for whitetails and our rabbits. Uh, this year we harvested everything out of this food plot and then we went ahead and planted uh, some more vetch, clover, and uh, a little bit of peas, winter peas, and some oats. Uh, this is going to be a lot of food this fall. It's going to grow for the next six to eight weeks. That's about how much time we have left. And then what we'll do is we'll overseed this as well with our cereal, cereal grain because that's going to continue to grow all year long and we can just produce a lot of food for our rabbits as well as our deer. 